Hey everyone, and welcome back to D3M 10 Minutes or Less. My name is Jasper, and today we are talking about something very exciting. That is how to combine React with D3. So you might be interested in this if you're a web developer that wants to get more into data visualization. You might be interested in this if you're a data viz nerd like me and you want to get into web development, much like I did. Uh, you might be interested in this if you just like combining different technologies and seeing how they play together. Uh, this first video will be a lot about the framework and kind of the design patterns and the decisions. We're not going to get too much into like building out a React D3 dashboard, but this will at least set the ground, set the ground level. So again, we can build on top of this with future videos. Uh, with that, let's let's get right into it. So uh, with with the web development aspect of this, we're going to uh, go with some of the faster tools out there. It'll make it easier for us to iterate. It will also help us um, move a bit slower up front so that we can move faster down the road. So we're going to be using React, TypeScript, and Snowpack. Uh, Snowpack is a web bundler that uh, has very fast reloads, reload times. It's uh, best in class right now. Uh, TypeScript is like JavaScript, except the objects you build and the things you create are strongly typed, meaning that if you have a string, you say, this is always going to be a string means you can't, it just helps to prevent yourself from creating what we call foot guns down on the road. Uh, and then React, I mean, if, you've, if you're interested in learning web development, you know what React is at this point. Uh, if you don't, check out uh, reactjs.org. Uh, okay, cool, so let's get started. Very first thing you're gonna do is uh, the same way that you might do something with create React app, we're gonna do something with create snowpack app. So you can see here, we're doing create snowpack app. Uh, React D3 dashboard is the name of the application and we're using this template right here. So snowpack, react, TypeScript. Hit enter, it's gonna build it for us. Uh, it's just gonna get things started, um, build out a bit of a sort of starter app just so that we can see that, that it's working. Again, this is just to get the ground set. Uh, for future videos, we'll go more into the data visualization. We will touch on data viz in this video, but it won't be as fun, uh, spicy, in-depth data viz stuff as we've been doing in the past few videos. Uh, you can see here, okay, it's ready. So I'm just gonna go CD React D3 dashboard because it creates that directory and NPM start. Okay, just getting going. So what we have over here is a hot reloading application, which means that every time I change something within this uh, file right here, app.tsx, it will change in the browser. Uh, this is a great part of web development is you get that almost instant feedback. With Snowpack, one of the nice things is the reload time is very, very fast. So that's gonna be very helpful for us um, as we get through this. So let's just, just to check, see I'm adding an exclamation point, saving, exclamation point. Great, okay. So we're gonna do a couple things here. The very first thing we're gonna do is strip out the header. So this is just to get the design pattern of React and D3 down. Uh, we'll jump into more of the how-to, uh, more of the details around building a, a dashboard in future videos. But this first design pattern, once we have this dialed, we'll be able to knock everything else out of the park. Um, okay, so we are going to create another file. I'm gonna call it bars, bars.tsx, which means it's a TypeScript file that will render HTML elements to the DOM. Uh, to save time, I did some of this beforehand. I can just copy paste it so you don't have to watch me flubbing around painfully. There we go. Okay, so I'll go through this line, line by line. We're importing React and D3. Ooh, there's a good reminder. Uh, there we go. D3 scale. Not completely painless, but just proof again that no one is perfect, not even the guy who talks about doing stuff on YouTube. npm install, npm start. Okay, so while that's installing, I'll just talk through this file a bit more. So 
uh, we're using React and D3 scale for this. The reason that we're just doing D3 scale is because React and D3 both uh, define how to render things to the DOM. Uh, so we want to, def we as the developers want to decide who does what, right? You need like clear division of concerns between React and D3 or else you're kind of like jumping back and forth. The approach that uh, that I've taken is to have D3 do the math and have React do the rendering. That's because React has its rendering engine, it has its diff engine that it uses to determine what's changed, so what it actually has to redraw. If stuff on the page doesn't change, if the backend data doesn't change, then React doesn't redraw it. So it's very efficient, especially when you have a lot of things uh, rendered within the application. D3, as I've talked about at length, is really good at uh, at math stuff, right? And to do really broad math stuff, uh, converting a piece of data to a dimension, right? Saying, okay, so this is 75% and it's a bar, so we wanna do 75% of the height. D3 is really good at that. So we're gonna use D3 scale along with React to determine how exactly to draw things. So you can see here, React and D3. Because this is TypeScript, we get to define the types up front. So we're gonna say this bars component is only ever going to allow for these props to be passed down to it. So data, which is an array of numbers, you see an array of numbers, and dimensions, which is an object where the key is always gonna be a string and the value is always gonna be a number and it is of any length. Uh, then the bars component itself, again, takes bar props, we're gonna, destructure the props to pull out data and dimensions and we're creating two scales it's the only bit of d3 we use in the entire component is right here is creating a scale band and a scale linear x scale and y scale if you've watched my other videos you know we've taken this approach before then we have an empty return statement let's just fill this out with an svg right now this is one of the key parts of this is that you start with an svg so that you have a space to draw to We'll set overflow to visible. And within this SVG statement, we need to do some curly brackets. This is basically saying, <clears throat> okay, I know I'm rendering an SVG. I'm rendering um, some web elements, but within here, I'm gonna like just sneak in a little bit more JavaScript. So here, I'm gonna do a map on the data array. So a map loops through an iterable like an array and for every item in that array it returns something so we're going to define what one item is called let's just call it d and what the index for each of those items is is d and dx okay so last but not least we're going to say hey return a rectangle and to start, let's just do height equals 50. Yeah, height equals 50 pixels, width also 50 pixels. This is just to get stuff up and running, to get, get it showing. X equals, nah, da, 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 da. oh, here we go. X equals, let's just do it this way because this will be easier x scale d dx y equals uh, dimensions dot height minus minus y scale d Let's actually type it correctly Let's just, while we're here, let's just do this the right way. Okay, so I was gonna pass in static attributes, but let's do it the right way. Uh, X scale dot band width. This, okay. So we're saying we're gonna loop through each object in the data array, and we are going to set its height, width, X and Y. So that's the basic things you, you define for a rectangle. Um, let's make it a little pretty. Stroke equals salmon, my favorite color. And fill equals dark salmon. Okay, 
So right now, uh, this shouldn't be showing anything here because we're not actually passing anything through to the bars component. What we will do is go back over here to app. We're gonna add a bit more sugar here. Or not sugar, let's not call it sugar because that means it's kind of sneaky stuff. What we're gonna do is uh, pull in a dimensions object and a data object. So you can see here, dimensions, I'm really just saying the height and the width uh, for data, just instantiating a number array using the use state function so that it's something that can be updated within the state of the application. Uh, still not showing anything. And the last thing we'll do is just add this to the use effect. And what this says is within this use effect, so every time that the page renders, if the length of the data object is less than 10, then push a random number. So math.random will get you a random number between zero and one. So a random number between zero and one. So 0 0.75, 0 0.26, 0 0.38. Um, if the data length is equal to or greater than 10, then use this splice function to basically shift everything to the left. So let's see how this goes. Okay, wait for file changes. All right, so last but not least, we need to actually call in that bars component. So bars, saying, hey, we don't know where that is, so I'm just gonna add that import. And it's still giving me a red squiggly because it knows, because it's TypeScript, it knows it's missing two, two props, data and dimensions. So bars data equals data. Very tricky, dimensions equals dimensions. Pass that through. Let's see what's going on here. Here, component, bars, dimensions, data. Let's see if I reload this, if that'll do it. Ha! So, uh, because I have this return statement here in the use effect function, it's not doing anything after it, which is why things were a little darker. Now, if I move this down and save, there we go. There's one bar. So, as expected, it's going through and it's adding a random number to each of the bars. Now that it's at 10, it's shifting everything. We can make this move a little bit faster if we want to do that. It's a little faster. Let's say data length is 100. So now it's adding it, now it's sliding. So that is how you get React and D3 to play nicely together. You get React to do most of the hard lifting around the rendering, around deciding what to draw, and use D3 intermittently for the math and for those calculations. That's the approach that I take. Uh, that's the approach that I would recommend you take if you're comfortable with React. If you're comfortable with D3, we'll, take, we'll try that one next time. So with that, we'll do a lot more of just rendering a canvas element within React and then using a D3 uh, function essentially to determine what to render and where. Um, that's all I've got for today. We went over a little bit, but I think it was worth it. I really hope this was useful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe. You can tell me you like this if you like it. You can tell me you don't like it if you don't like it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I wish you all the best and I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your day and happy learning.